Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to cover a classic um, structure and bonding question about deciding whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. And um, this question is not answered very well, I find, by my students. And I think it's one of the easier questions on the exam paper because there seems to be a question on it every year. So if I take the example of CCl4, so carbon tetrachloride versus CHCl3, so there's only three chlorine atoms there. And the first thing, um, well, the question is asking to decide whether the molecules are polar or nonpolar and to explain. Now, the explanation involves a lot of key terms. Um, the key terms include the shape. So you'd have to decide on the shape of the molecule and then give the right name. So in this case, it's going to be tetrahedral for both. And you have to talk about electronegativity. So differences in electronegativity um, will decide if you have a polar bond or not. Then once you've decided on electronegativity, you need to talk about um, electron distribution, which can be referred to as being symmetrical, which means it's evenly spread, or asymmetric, which means it's not evenly spread. So you talk about electron density or distribution, and then you talk about um, whether the molecule, whether you have a polar, polar molecule or not. So these are the steps that I'm going to follow in deciding whether these molecules are polar or not. And even if you don't pick the right one, and when you're doing your assessment, I try to push students to follow these steps. Um, so at least if you're using the correct terminology, you will pick up marks um, as you go through your answer. But if you don't use the key terms, and you just try to um, guess which one is polar and which one is nonpolar without any real explanation, well, you're not really going to pick up many marks for anything. Um, so this question is a question you should be picking up lots of attempt marks on if you're not sure of what you're doing. And um, if we take a look at CCL4, well, it is a tetrahedral shape, so we put one in the plane of the page, another one in the plane of the page there, one coming out at you. So we use the shaded in wedge, so that's um, an atom coming out at you. And then we have a bond which is disappearing into the, the back of the page like that. So it gives that tetrahedral impression. Um, that's carbon tetrachloride. And then the other one, we put the hydrogen on top here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put that hydrogen, by the way but I just like to put it on the top there for simplicity of explanation. And then your three chlorine atoms down the bottom here. And remember, each of these chlorine atoms would have three lone pairs of electrons on them, and these are what um, help to influence the shape of the molecule, as well as the number of atoms that you have. But it's tetrahedral in both cases. So we've decided the shape, um, and that's very important. The next thing to talk about is electronegativity. Well, Electronegativity, if I just give a quick definition. Um, electronegativity, um, well, if you look at it, it's a compound word. It's made up of electro, which comes from electron, and then negativity, which comes from how negative uh, something is. So if an atom is really electronegative, then it loves to grab electrons. And the trend in the periodic table is that the most electronegative element is fluorine, and it has a value of 4.0 for electronegativity. So electronegativity increases as you go across from left to right on the periodic table, and also as you go from the bottom of the periodic table up to the top. And it's all because these elements in group 7, they only need one more electron, so therefore they're really, really grabby um, or electronegative, and they're looking for that extra electron from elements like um, non-metals or carbon in, in this case um, or the metals sodium um, potassium etc are really good at giving up electrons so that's the trend in electronegativity so if you look at your molecule of ccl4 here you can see that you have a highly electronegative element there in the chlorine another one here another one here and another one here so if all the electron density is being drawn drawn towards those ends of the molecule well, you have four polar bonds there, which can be represented with this symbol. And um, the base of the, the, the end of this symbol here, if you see, that actually makes a positive sign if you draw a circle around it. And the arrow here is showing that the electron density is being drawn in favor of this element. There's also one of those polar bonds going up there. If we look at CHCl3, we have three polar bonds in this molecule. The electron density is being drawn all towards that base end of the molecule. And then there's a slightly um, polarized bond here between the hydrogen and the carbon, but even hydrogen is less polar than carbon. 
So um, the election activity would also be moving in that direction too. Um, so we have um, three large, largely polar bonds here. And then you have one slightly polar bond. And one slightly polar bond, which would be the carbon hydrogen bond. Over here, you have four clear polar bonds. So both molecules have polar bonds, and this tends to be the way in the molecules that behave in the question. Um, but the decision now is to decide whether the polar bonds cancel each other or not, and therefore deciding if the, the molecule is polar overall. Well, if we look at um, electron distribution now in terms of um, if it's symmetrical or not, and students find this difficult to understand, um, so I'll explain it as best I can now. So I've redrawn the two molecules here, and we're going to talk about symmetrical and asymmetrical electron distribution. Um, in the CCL4, we have an area of electron density down here, 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 and up the top. So the electron density is evenly distributed, so not favoring one particular end. So it's evenly distributed. So we describe this as symmetrical um, electron distribution. I like to think of the symmetry as the in terms of the electron distribution. And therefore, the polar bonds um, cancel. The polar bonds cancel each other, each other. And therefore, the molecule is non-polar. Because if each polar bond cancels the other one, then the overall molecule is non-polar. And we can represent that using our arrows. So if the positive end is here towards the carbon, and that polar bond is pulling in that direction, and then we also have polar bonds, these three polar bonds pulling in that direction, well, then they, the, the bonds cancel. Whereas if we look at the situation over here, um, all of the polar bonds are pulling in the same direction. And therefore, we have asymmetric electron distribution. And what that means in this case is that all of the negative stuff is being pulled down towards this end of the molecule. And then you have very few electrons up here. So you have an asymmetric situation. It's not the same on both sides. So an asymmetric electron distribution. The polar bonds don't cancel. Therefore, the molecule overall will be polar. So you can represent that with one large arrow, which is separate for the molecule itself, and the overall molecule is, is polar, whereas the CCL4 is nonpolar. And that's a good example of how to discuss whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. Um, in some years, they give you a polar and a non-polar molecule, but just be careful because in, in other years recently now, they've started to give two polar molecules in some cases just to try and catch students out. But if you follow the system, and as I say, if you're using your key terms, like we discussed at the beginning, then at least if you write an answer, you should be picking up a tent mark for using the correct terminology and the correct process. But that is a classic question which comes up in the structure and bonding um, example.